turn with me to Romans 1. You're there already. Now, I need to say a couple of things this evening as we get started. Now, I, I, I lovingly, respectfully ask everybody to lean in and listen very carefully. Unfortunately, this topic that we're going to talk about tonight, this hot button soapbox issue, it affects more people, I believe, than what we want to admit, at least as the ripple effects of people's choices and lifestyle choices, those ripple effects extend out to family, to parents, to grandparents, to siblings, to in-laws. I would dare say this evening that there are very few families represented in this room that have not been impacted in some way by this issue. I know in my own family, there have been ripple effects from this issue. Tonight's issue is the LGBTQIA plus agenda. And yes, each one of those letters stands for something. Now, you and I, as we talk about this issue, as we think through this issue biblically and prayerfully, we have choices on how we're going to think about it, how we're going to respond to it, how even in our reaction, what our reaction is going to be to it. How many of you believe that God is as concerned as, he's as concerned about our disposition about a subject as he is our position on a subject? You see, number one, he cares that we have the right stand, the right position. But he also cares about the fact that we have the right spirit with the right stand and the right disposition as we take the right position. There have been those who have acquiesced. They have shifted from a biblical position on this issue and they have, through condoning sinful behavior, condoning a sinful lifestyle, in an effort not to offend, not to be misunderstood as having the wrong spirit or having the wrong disposition, there have been many Christians who have decided to just really be silent on the issue, really to ignore the issue or to come down on the wrong side of truth. And then there have been those who have taken the opposite extreme as a Christian. You've taken the right stand on the issue and you've got your verses memorized and, and yet our spirit about it sometimes is unchristian or it's calloused or, hear me, we, we, we mock, scorn, ridicule, and poke fun at those who have chosen a homosexual, lesbian lifestyle. And I want to say this very carefully. I say this carefully but boldly. Neither of these extremes honors Jesus. Neither of these extremes are biblical thoroughly. Because all of us tonight, God wants us to have the right stand on every issue. Certainly this one. And he wants us to have the right spirit as well. And the right spirit, gang, is not the spirit of arrogance. 
It's not the spirit of hatred, not unless we're hating our own sin and sin, not the sin. And we don't hate the sinner. That's not biblical. We confront, we warn, we speak the truth in love. We speak the truth in love. We don't speak it with a desire for them to burn. I know of preachers who have gotten up in their pulpits and said that use terminology like, and please understand why I tell you this, they have said, I think we ought to have a Hana Homo day. And shoot them all with 12 gauges and tell God they died of chicken pox. Now I want you to hear me carefully. Number one, thank you for not amening that. Because I may confront you after service if you did. Because that spirit is unchristian. You're like, well, that's, that, that, that's how I feel about it. Well, that may be how you feel about it, but that's a carnal reaction. And that reaction doesn't honor Jesus or glorify God. And so there is a biblical balance. You say, well, where do you stand? You know where I stand on the issue. (laughs) And you're going to know in about 20 minutes. For real. So if after our lesson tonight, you are more mad at people and not more mad at Satan, then I have failed. Or you have chosen to respond improperly to the truth. The correct result, I pray tonight from this study, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you, there's going to be, it's going to be two parts. I'm only going to get through half of it. The correct result tonight is a grieved heart, a humble spirit, and an informed but courageous, truth-filled mind. And buddy, when you want to talk about a delicate issue, that hurts a lot of people, this is one. And that's why tonight I have asked the Lord, Lord, please help me to be, to speak truth clearly, but to have the mind of Christ about it and the spirit of Christ. So this hot button topic tonight is the LGBTQ agenda. So let's just start with the questions. All right, you're going to have to really, really lean in this evening and focus for a few minutes because I need you to listen. Why address this issue? Are we addressing this issue tonight just because I want to get you riled up? No. We address this issue because it's not just a cultural issue, even though it is. But this issue is first and foremost a deeply spiritual issue. And it's a deeply, thoroughly theological issue. Because how someone views this issue reveals how they view God and how they view God's creation design. This is a frontline issue for Bible believing Christians. Gendered speech. You say, what's gendered speech? Gendered speech is the use of terms like man, woman, male, female, boy, girl, etc. That is now in some circles even now regarded as hate speech. Now let that sink in just a moment, brothers and sisters. (laughs) When you refer to somebody by their natural biology, what they were (laughs) at birth, that they can now take offense in some regions of the world, some countries... In some provinces of Canada, and that is termed as hate speech. And you could face arrest and criminal prosecution for it. I'm not making that up at all. There's now pressure on pastors to censor sermons. There's resistance to teaching children God's design for men and women. 
So there are in this one issue huge free speech implications that are now upon us. That 20, 30 years ago, if someone were to say that if you call a man a man and a woman a woman, that you'll be prosecuted, could be, could be criminally prosecuted for it, we would laugh that person out of the room. Well, now it's an issue. And so we go to get clarity where we always need to go to get clarity. We go to Scripture. In Genesis 1, verse 27, for a biblical basis, God created man in his own image. He created male and female. Matthew 19, 4, Jesus, in referring back to the book of Genesis, says, have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? But there's a Gallup poll from research conducted in, back in 2021 that's very revealing to me. It's interesting. It's heartbreaking. It reveals in February of 2022 the tagline said LBGT identification in the United States ticks up. In other words, it's, it's, it's going up. The percentage of U- U.S. adults who self-identify as LGBT or something other than heterosexual has increased to a new high of 7.1%, which is double from what it was just 10 years earlier. Roughly, think about this, roughly, listen carefully, 21% of those who are, we would term, Generation Z Americans, Gen Zers, you may have heard them referred to, those Gen Zers who have reached adulthood, those born in America between 1997 and 2003, 21% of them now identify as LGBT. That's nearly double the proportion of millennials. All right, you've heard that term there. And by the way, this room is not filled with millennials, okay? You're, You're older than a millennial. But a millennial is a young person, we would say, or at least a young adult. Someone in their 30s now, maybe their 40s, That's most of us in this room are outside that category. But even in that category, in the millennials, those born between 1981 and 1996, 10.5% of them in America identify as LBGT. So I don't know if you've paid attention, if you paid attention to those numbers I just gave you. So as the generation, as the population gets younger, those self-identifying, that number is getting broader and larger. The prediction is that the proportion of LGBT Americans should exceed 10% in the near future, and that was over two years ago. 2023 Gallup survey, a very similar survey, shows the percentage of adults who identified as LGBT in the United States has more than doubled in the past decade. So let me give you some terms to remember, to understand what is being said when you hear things in the news or you read something in a publication. There's the term transgender, a transgender person also called a transsexual, someone whose gender identity does not conform to that typically associated with the sex they were assigned at birth. There's a term non-binary. It's a classification for gender identity that is not exclusively male or female. They may identify as a third gender. Or they may identify as more than one gender. The term for that is bigender. Or they may identify as no gender. 
Or they may identify as having a fluctuating gender identity that maneuvers and goes back and forth. They're called pangender. You know that the LGBTQ, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and then a term that they have coined and taken as their own, the term queer. In the 21st century, queer became increasingly used, that term, used to describe a broad spectrum of non-normative gender or sexual identities. The term is used deliberately by the gay community as an umbrella term for anyone who is not heterosexual, and a term that they use for heterosexual is cisgender, which means you're one gender. You're, you're, you're following the gender you were assigned at birth. So what, obviously this has been in the news. Obviously this has been a part of our culture for years now, and it has. But what recent events lets us know that this is a pressing issue? Well, I would say, first of all, the Biden administration. Now, again, I don't say that as to stir up your passions against Joe Biden. Take the person out of it. But his administration has been at the forefront since he became president of a deliberate push for the promotion of the transgender movement and the agenda. There are 29, think about this, 29 different holidays on the calendar in America, three entire months separate from those 29 different holidays, three entire months in the U.S. calendar devoted to LGBT causes. There's Pride Month in June, the whole month, LGBT History Month in October, and Transgender Awareness Month in November. That's three months and 28 days. So almost four whole months of our U.S. calendar is devoted to transgender causes. On Good Friday, President Biden issued a proclamation recognizing Sunday, March the 31st, as you remember, as the Transgender Day of Visibility. That's not the first day, the first year, where he has issued that. But nonetheless, here's what he said on that Good Friday just a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago now. Today, we send a message to all transgender Americans. You are loved, you are heard, you are understood, you belong, you are America. And my entire administration and I have your back. Well, that's the message he's clearly communicated for three plus years. This day of visibility, as it's called, was created in 2009 by a Michigan-based transgender activist. But Biden was the first president to proclaim that date, March 31st, as the official day of transgender visibility when he did so in 2021. Do you know how many LGBT people that the Biden administration has appointed to key positions? Well, it's over 200 appointees in his administration. According to TheHill.com, White House officials frequently tout the diversity of President Biden's administration, including that roughly 15% of all appointees identify as LGBT. NBC News, December 4th, 2020. Here was the headline. This is right before he is after he was elected president, but before he was inaugurated. Biden administration on track to be the most LGBT inclusive in U.S. history. And here's what it said. President-elect Joe Biden has repeatedly vowed to make LGBT rights a priority in his administration. And friends, that prediction and pledge has absolutely come true. CNN just 
A few weeks ago, March 19th, 2024, the headline, Biden administration ties the record for the number of confirmed LGBT judges in the federal courts. Now listen carefully. 11 federal judges who identify as LGBT have been appointed and confirmed, hear this, to lifetime positions. Lifetime positions on the federal court. That is very important to understand. They've been appointed by Biden. There are currently 23 federal judges who identify as LGBTQ. This is even made more apparent because the Wisconsin governor last week, on Tuesday of last week, April the 2nd, 2024, Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers vetoed a bill that was passed by the Republican-controlled legislature. Now, here was what that bill was. It was a bill to ban high school transgender athletes from competing on teams that align with their gender identity. In other words, if a transgender athlete, if a biological male identified as a female then they were being allowed to compete as a female instead of what they really were biologically, and that's a male. Are y'all following me? So the Wisconsin legislature said, put the brakes on. This is not right. This is not safe. This is not logical. So we're going to ban this. And by the way, I commend the ban. That's logic. But the Wisconsin governor, Evers, vetoed the ban. The bill proposed to limit high school athletes to playing on teams that matched the gender they were biologically assigned at birth. Only children designated male on their birth certificate would be allowed to play on male teams and vice versa for the females. Republicans who backed the bill argued it was a matter of fairness to non-transgender athletes. Yes, I agree. However, bill opponents said the proposed ban, hear this, was a form of discrimination and harmful to transgender youths. So the governor vowed that as long as he's governor, he will not allow for radical policies that target LGBTQ individuals and families and threatening LGBTQ people. It's interesting that at least 20 states have approved a version of a blanket bill on transgender athletes playing in School, K-12, through and collegiate sports teams like 20 states. But a Biden administration proposal to forbid such outright bans is set to be finalized this year after multiple delays and much pushback. As proposed, the rule will establish that blanket ban would violate Title IX the landmark gender equity legislation enacted in 1972. And some of y'all remember that. I don't because I was one year old. But then on April the 1st, just last week, Scotland passed what they termed in their country as the new hate speech law. Scotland's new hate speech law called the Hate Crime and Public Orders Act went into effect Monday, April the 1st, 2024. Six different categories of people who are protected from what is identified as hate speech are protected from what are identified as hate acts or hate crimes. Age, disability, religion, sexual orientation, transgender identity, and people with variation in sex characteristics. Okay, listen carefully. This is important to understand. The target is any action that a reasonable person, and I'm quoting now, would consider to be threatening, abusive, or insulting. Insulting. In other words, if an LGBTQ person feels insulted by you, then according to Scotland's law, 
it could be interpreted by a judge that that insult is a hate crime. Now, let me tell you what an insult could encompass. I went to a place of business today, and someone there, it was obvious they were a biological male, but they were identifying as a female because on his cap there were stickers and pins, and one of those pins said, her, or I'm sorry, she and they. She and they. That's how this person was identifying. So if we were in Scotland, and if I were to say to this biological male, Sir, that person could say, you insulted me. Are you picking up what I'm laying down? And by law, in Scotland, that's a criminal act. Now, you say, CP, that's in Scotland, that's not in America. You took the words right out of my mouth. The longer we go, you know this. They say that what begins to happen in the British Isles spreads to Europe. Legislation in Europe spreads across the Atlantic to Canada and ultimately seeps its way down south. That's why I share this. Albert Muller said, if you're out of line with the LGBTQ revolution, you're going to be shut down, you're going to be shut up, or you're going to be threatened continually with legal action. And I'm afraid he's right, dear one. The government, he said, now this is important, the government can't make a girl a boy and cannot make a man a woman. And we say absolutely amen. It may claim that it can establish a new legal reality, but it cannot change anatomy and physiology. It may rebel against creation order, but it cannot reverse creation order. That is not in its power. Answers in Genesis about this issue stated, transgender ideology is sweeping the West, redefining political policies, economic priorities, free speech, and religious freedom, while irreversibly damaging the lives of those who buy into it. In the United States, 1.4 million adults identify as transgender. By the way, here's what's interesting. North Carolina has the highest percentage of all the states in the country. That's interesting to me. I didn't say New York. I didn't say California. I didn't say Oregon. I said the Tar Heel State. We must understand tonight that the end goal is not simply to protect a tiny minority of the population from unfair discrimination. I'm not for discrimination, but that's not the goal. The real goal, the real agenda is to fundamentally and legally eliminate any and all distinctions between male and female sex. 20 years ago, the goal was to be tolerated. That was their goal. We want to be tolerated. 10 years ago, the goal was to be validated or affirmed. But tonight, men and women, I believe the goal is they want to be normalized and legitimized. I'm going to stop right there for tonight. So I want to say this as we get ready to pray. Listen very carefully. The Apostle Paul addresses this issue in Romans 1. It's crystal clear. It's not the only place, not the only place, but it's one of the places. 
And here's what's interesting. As he is dealing with that sin. By the way, don't forget that when he's listing that sin, he's also listing other sins that heterosexual Christians are guilty of committing, by the way. Don't forget that. So he's not just calling out homosexuality and lesbianism. He's not just exposing the transgender agenda in Romans 1. He's calling out lostness and the reprobate mind. And there are a lot of things that reveal itself in a reprobate mind. So don't forget that. But, but here's what I want to close with. The reason for the book of Romans was to show that everybody is lost. Jew, Gentile, religious, educated, non-educated, the cultured, the non-cultured. Everybody's lost. Those listed in the list of a reprobate mind, everybody's lost. But remember this. The reason he gave the, the book of Romans is to show that not only is everybody lost and everybody condemned, but that's why Jesus came and went to the cross. Somebody say amen right there. Because the gospel is applicable and relevant to every single life. And there is, hear me now, no life outside the scope of the reach and the power of the gospel of Jesus. So this message is a clarion call from the book of Romans chapter 1. To anyone who's listening tonight with someone in their family or a friend or a neighbor or a coworker, someone you love and care about who is living in the very grips of this sin, you take heart, you stay encouraged, you love that person. You treat that person with dignity. It doesn't mean you condone their sin, but you treat them with kindness because they are made in the image of God just as you are. They're rebelling against creation order. They're rebelling against God, but they, living inside that body, have a never-dying soul that's going to live on somewhere forever. And their greatest need Hear me, their greatest need is the same as my greatest need. Their greatest need is not heterosexuality. Their greatest need is the gospel. Their greatest need is Jesus. You see, I'm a liar by nature. I am, and so are you. But your greatest need is my, and mine, your greatest need in mine is not to tell the truth. Your greatest need in mine is the gospel of Jesus and to be transformed from the inside out. Much, much more to say. You come back, same bat time, same bat channel.